Food trends come and go in the den. But when the New York Times wrote that bone broth is the next coconut water, our final entrepreneur tonight wanted to be the first to market in Ireland. My name is Sarah Kiley and I'm the owner and founder of Sadie's Kitchen. Sadie's Kitchen produces Ireland's first packaged bone broth. A more time intensive and nutritious alternative to stocks, it can be drunk straight or for use as a base with soups and sauces. I started to drink bone broth because I suffered quite badly with digestive issues. Um, after trying every supplement and over-the-counter treatment, I discovered bone broth. Though not at all convenient to make, I found that it had a dramatic effect on my own digestive health and it's something that I wanted to include as a staple for myself, but also for everyone. We don't want to keep it so niche and so unattainable. I believe that everyone should have access to the best food and it shouldn't be an exclusive thing. In terms of what dragon I have my eye on, it would definitely be Alison. I know she's got her pulse on particularly innovation in food and what's coming down the track, so I think Alison would be a fantastic dragon. Hello dragons, my name is Sarah Kiley and I am the owner and founder of Sadie's Kitchen. Sadie's Kitchen is Ireland and Europe's first bone broth brand for retail that contains zero added salt or preservatives. We use only free range Irish chicken, fresh vegetables, an organic apple cider vinegar. You can enjoy Sadie's Kitchen bone broth simply on its own as a restorative hot drink, add us to meals as a delicious stock, or pop into juices or smoothies for an added boost of collagen. Currently, Sadie's Kitchen is retailing in over 100 stores across Ireland, and I'm here today seeking 50,000 euro investment in exchange for 15% equity in my company. As Sarah pours the dragons a sample of her bone broth to taste, Gavin is the first to question her on the nutritional value. Hi, Sarah. So in this serving I got today, approximately how many calories? We're 32 calories in a pack. So what you have would be four to five calories. And Eleanor, you liked the taste of it, yeah? Yeah, I do. Yeah, OK. I mean, for me, it's quite insipid mm -hmm. to drink it, actually. It's not a very enjoyable taste. We don't add salt as a brand, so it's very easy for a customer, and it's a very low cost for the customer at home to season to taste. So that is a conscious decision that we've made. I actually enjoy the taste of it, Thank and you. I get the comfort piece. Um, I grew up in a household where um, my mother gave us the, if she boiled cabbage or whatever, we drank the water. The, the water. So I suppose maybe it brings me back to that. This isn't a refrigerator product in it store? It is a chilled product, It is, yeah. OK. And once you open it in the fridge, if you just use part of it? It's two to three days from opening. Right, OK. And this is retailing at? It retails at €4.50. Euro OK. Thanks, Sarah. I have to say, Eleanor, I, I love the look of it. You Thank know, you. It just um, looks like a, an intravenous sa sa sachet, you know, but like... Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's a good delivery. It smells mechanism. health, yeah. doesn't it, you know? Yeah. Well, Sarah, I spend a lot of time in the States and bone broth seems to be a big thing over there. What are the health benefits? There is research done primarily in the United States that bone broth, because of its collagen content, is very good for joint care and health. So it would be very favourable with athletes everywhere through to pop-up stores and dedicated restaurants who will serve this for $8 a cup. Kobe Bryant said that this stuff could bring people back from the dead. If I could put that on my packaging, I'd be a very happy woman. <laughs> but we all are very aware of um, the labelling laws here in Ireland. So we tend to under-promise and over-deliver with how we communicate what a bone broth does. Right. I mean, I think it's good and um, positive that you're not making these outrageous claims no, that not, health yeah. food companies make. I saw one product in a pharmacy recently and written on the side of it was the key to return to life, which <laughs> probably is, you know, over-egging yeah. it a little bit. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's great and very positive and yeah. very ethical. Let's move from the food to the numbers now. Mm -hmm. What are your projections for the next three years? Year one projections um, turnover, we're looking at 133,000 with a gross profit of 63,000 euro. Year two, 399,200 turnover. Year three, turnover of 1,098,000 gross profit of 526,000 and a net profit of 180,000 euro. Right, it, it just seems uh, like for something that's water and bones, it would seem that yeah, the cost huge... should be lower. Yeah, at the moment, I suppose, it, it, like with all things, it's a volume game. So as our volume ups, there's huge scope because it is, in terms of ingredients, it is a lean product to make. Yeah. So. 
Of your cost of goods, what percentage is packaging and what percentage would be labour manufacturing? It costs 97 cent and then packaging comes in at 34 cent. And then you're selling it into the distributor for at two, 2.52. At 2.52. Yeah. Our manufacturer as well, like they take on our packaging costs. That's a built-in price altogether. Yeah. And okay. that's something that wasn't always the case with the business and completely ate up the cash flow. So that's something that I was able to push back on the manufacturer. So they essentially have taken on those costs. So all I'm doing is selling it to the distributor who's then selling it on. So just a couple of questions around the distribution. How are you handling returns? Is the distributor taking responsibility for, for yes. returns? They are, yeah. okay. I think you've achieved an incredible amount uh, of wins already if you've got your producer to take account of the uh, packaging and you've got your distributor to take, uh, to take the hit on, on your returns. You've done extremely well on negotiating both of those at, at this early stage, so Thank well you. done on that. Thanks. You're kind of tripling your sales every year. Mm -hmm. What makes you confident you can do that? So if you mention bomb broth in Ireland, like you're going to be met with Sadie's Kitchen as the brand. My passion is food. It's I'm not formally trained as a chef, uh, nor do I to pretend to be. I just adore food. So what is your background then? My background is in PR and marketing, and I'm very lucky that I can apply it to Sadie's Kitchen now. We're constantly engaging with our customer. We've gotten a shared following of nearly 10,000 people across social media, and we talk to them. Mm. Well, you've just led me in uh, nicely to my next question. So I'm a customer. I walk into the supermarket. Um, I've never heard of bone broth before, because actually I didn't until you came in here. Yeah. So excuse my ignorance. That's okay. Um, and I see this product. And really, there is no wording on this that tells me the benefits of bone broth. Mm -hmm. We give a bit on, we obviously give our story on the packaging. I take your point, maybe it's not quick enough when you're on a front I mean, facing. I've, I've read it twice now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. I can see what I can do with the product, mm -hmm. but what I don't know is what is the benefits of bone broth? Okay. What does it do for my body? Yeah. Because if I saw, oh, it can do X, Y, and Z, of or it's, then I would be, oh, great, I'm, I'm going to buy this. But see, I, the issue with that is, particularly in Ireland, like food labeling laws, there is only so much we can put on a pack. So how we're combating that is through PR, through social media, through our marketing. It's all about the customer experience, mm -hmm. and it's all about educating the customer, and it's about getting the customer to take that off the, mm -hmm. off the shelf. Sure. What I worry about a little bit is because you, you're so strong on marketing and PR that you're kind of creating a category here in Ireland that didn't exist until you came into the market, but having done all the hard work of creating the category mm -hmm. that other people will just come in in mm -hmm. your draft and take advantage of the work that you've yeah. done. That's the way, that's the downside of first mover advantage sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a great question. It's something I think every small, food business who's looking to scale will face. I have tried to source manufacturing for less. It's not the easiest thing to do. You need both a meat license and the correct equipment to do this. There's not a lot of people who can produce this in, in Ireland in particular. Um, the main thing what we're trying to do, like we're a brand, we're Sadie's Kitchen. We're first out the gate. We've been on shelves now for eight months. You know, we are emerging and I, I think that we, we can contend. <laughs> How big do you think this can be? This is the next phase of health. People are fed up of being misled about what goes on in, particularly in soups and ready meals. Yeah, I think, I think there really is no limit with this. I think it's a suite of products that needs to happen and we need to move fast. We have a Swiss distribution company who wants our product yesterday. I've done the best I can to date, but I suppose that's why I'm here. I need someone on board who's strategic, who's seasoned, who sees the potential in this product and in this brand. And I really think that you're going to hear an awful lot about bone broth in the next couple of months. Thanks, Sarah. She's fantastic, Good pitch. isn't she? She's She's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, Tell you what. I'm loving you. I'm just loving you. Uh, well done. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to decide, are you really the special one? Because I think, impressive and all as you are, you have to be so special, so lucky, because Barry is really on the money uh, when he says, you know, you're creating the category, mm -hmm. then own label appears beside it. At the end of the day, like, we're not selling yellow pack burgers either. Do you know, like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is something in this, like, it's, it's a premium product, it's premium ingredients, it's Irish, it's free range. No one is doing free range Irish chicken, even in soups or any of the ready meals that are out there. 
Sarah, I'm familiar with the product. I've uh, purchased it. In fact, I think there are two packs sitting in the fridge at home. If you get investment today, what would you do with 50 grand? The 50,000 euro would 100% enable more marketing for the brand and that is key customer awareness. And I take your point completely on that. Like we have done a lot of education. There's so much more we can do and also for new product development. Okay. There is no doubt Sarah has impressed. All five dragons are still in play. But do they believe enough in this next food wave to invest 50,000 euro for 15% of Sadie's Kitchen? You know, look, you're very impressive. You've done a very good pitch. I think you and the product are going to go a long way. But there's nothing that makes me feel that me as a dragon can deliver for you on this product. So for that reason, I'm out. Sarah, it's the first time in the den that I've been tempted to look at food. Okay. Because I actually veer away from it. You are incredible and I really admire your instincts. Thank you. But it's, it's just not for me. I wish you'd been selling anything else other than food. I will definitely be a, a customer. Thank you. Um, so best of luck, Sarah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Chanel and Eleanor were impressed with Sarah, but not enough to invest. Is time running out for her in the den? I'm hugely interested in what you're doing. Bone broth is something that I believe is the next wave. So I'm going to make you an offer. What I think I can bring is that strategic mentoring and, and ability to scale this business. So you're looking for 50 grand for 15%. I'm not going to be greedy. I'll offer you the 50 grand for 20% of your business. OK, thank you, Alison. Sarah, that's a very good offer. Look, uh, you have an offer from one of the smartest people in the food industry. Uh, that's not me. I'm out. Thank you, Barry. With an offer from the dragon that Sarah came looking for, will Gavin dare to outmaneuver the food industry expert? You've maneuvered well at 20. 50,000 for 20%. I don't think I can better 20, so um, I'm going to uh, bow out. I pro possibly will. Uh, watch your success with uh, a tinge of perhaps I should have moved a tad earlier. Uh, I'm out. Thank you, Gavin. So now you have to make up your mind. Yes. If I just take the course you can. Yeah. yeah. Alison has offered Sarah the full amount of 50,000 euro for a 20% share of Sadie's kitchen. She's the dragon she came looking for. But will they do a deal? Alison, thank you so much for your offer and I would be delighted to accept. Great. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Real quick. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bye. Yeah. Sarah, well done. You've got Alison as a dragon. Was she the one you had in your sights all along? Absolutely. From the minute that I applied for Dragon's Den, Alison uh, was in my sights. The fact that the product has actually been in her own home and that her family use it was just the icing on the cake. So I definitely got my dream dragon today. Every time a dragon asks you a tricky question, you kept coming back, you had all the answers. I live and breathe this, it's a passion product for me. I like to think that I am so hands-on that I do know the business inside out. I don't know whether it struck the rest of you, but when I heard that you had done the deal, the packaging Absolutely. with the man in Ireland. That's a clincher, that weird. doesn't happen. <laughs> I, that's so rare. This is she only her knew. first business. This she, is only her first business. so encouraging. She is yeah. a breath of fresh air. Let's hope there's loads more of her coming into the den. Alison, if I didn't love you, I'd hate you. <laughs> <laughs>